Oh, hello everybody. Welcome to episode two of our chicken pincushion ex extravaganza. We're going to learn some different things tonight than what we learned last night. More importantly, you're going to see from beginning to end, including, including finishing the chickens and filling them up, how to do all of that fun stuff. Okay. We'll get started here in about three more minutes. Welcome to our happy Saturday night episode. Woohoo! Hope everyone is doing well. Hi, Tresha. Welcome. I see you're from Texas, from Tejas. Yes, I love, I love me, I love my Texas. <clears throat> But I'm just getting all my supplies together. I have a lot of interesting and fun stuff to show everybody tonight. As you can see, I was busy today. All of the chickens I have made to this point, I finished off today except for eyes. I have a straight pin here in the eye <clears throat> as a temporary holder until I'm going to show you how I'm going to put eyes on everybody. And I'm actually going to use an embroidery knot technique to do that with. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Good evening. Hi, Lisa. Welcome from Naples, Florida. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know it's nice and warm, warm down there and good, good, beautiful, sunny Naples. It is not here. It, is, it has been windy and chilly all day. We're going to have highs in the 30s for the next, at least the next week, if not, I think the 10-day forecast is in highs in the 30s for the next 10 days so yeehaw gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> oh let me get a drink of my coffee here I mean make some room I looks like I'm peeking over through my chickens here they make wonderful pin cushions and you can see here this one I've actually I actually used and it has pins in it you can also stick in sewing needles here's my embroidery needle right here that I'll be using later But, and then tonight I will show you how to do the chicken tail. The one I did last night <clears throat> was this one right here. <clears throat> and I didn't put a tail on it. But tonight I'll show you all the ins and outs of putting in the tails and how to fold the beaks and all that fun stuff. Easy peasy. Woohoo, it's almost that time. Woohoo, everybody. Hi, Tracy. Me some of my coffee here. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you notice on these chickens, <clears throat> like I showed last night, episode one, I used fa I used fabric and then I snipped it to make fringe after I had it sewn in and everything. But I'm going to be using yarn tonight for the combs instead of the little fabric snippies, and that'll give a totally different effect. That's what this one is. This is eyelash yarn, and I have I found some of my eyelash yarn to use for tonight's episode. I'm gonna start moving these out of our way. So many chickens, woohoo! <clears throat> and then I'm going to do my first um, colonial knot on this one right here. That I'll do that after we piece, make a couple of more chickens, and then I will show you, show you how to do that knot, that embro hand embroidery knot. And if you have ever have ever thought about doing any type of hand embroidery, <clears throat> this, is, this is a book that I really, really like. This is by Sue Spargo, Creative Stitching, and this is all hand embroidery. An embellishment. This is an awesome, awesome book. Step by step with photos on how to do that. This is the actual. This is the actual stitch I'm going to use for my chicken eyes. You turn the page, and right down here. That is what it would look like. Oops, stitched out right there. It'll just be one of those, but they make a really big, large knot, and I think it'd be perfect 
for the eyes and the chickens. Well, Tracy, I do have a carriage house out back, so there would be room in the carriage house for all the chickens I could possibly ever want to make. We'll be referring to this book a little bit later in tonight's episode. And let's see, I think we are ready to get started. Now, you have to have two squares of fabric to make the body of the chicken, okay? This one was done with a five inch square or a five inch charm square. And since it was there was no piecing in it, it came out somewhat larger. You can see there, this one, I've got like three or four of these sizes made. But these were also made from two charm squares, two five inch squares of fabric made this. But the reason it's smaller, I cut this up into each five inch square into four equal squares, which are two and a half, sewed them together, made a block, then sewed the two blocks together to make the body of the chicken. So, and actually, if you were buying a pack of charm squares, five inch squares, you can make quite a few chickens out of that, pin cushions, simply because it takes three five inch squares to make one chicken. That includes a tail and the beak, the beaks, okay? This I did from just some scraps that I had sitting around, so there was nothing, nothing. Yes, Lisa, it is like a French knot, except that it's larger than a French knot. And I'm gonna do that live on camera tonight on this chicken right here. This is gonna be our practice chicken for the, the, it's called a colonial knot, is the hand knot that I'm gonna use. So, without further ado, we're gonna get started. So what I'm going to piece tonight, I'm gonna to swap to the other camera. I have my pieces all laid out over here. Let's see, that one right there. And I'm going to piece one nine patch, but this will make enough for two It'll make enough for the body for two chickens because I'm going to then piece it together like this and then I'm going to cut it this way and then this way and then that will give me four quilt blocks to make two chickens. And that's what we're going to get started with right now. I'm going to piece this nine patch right here just like I have it laid out. Okay, let's go to the other camera. There we go. And we are going to piece our nine patch and get that done. And these, just so you know, these are four inch squares of fabric, everybody. So <clears throat> that will give me a block that finishes at about five and a half inches square after it's all sewn up. So it'll make, it'll be slightly larger than this, oops, than this. It'll be slightly larger than this, but it'll be smaller than this one here. Oops, the chicken tail touched my sewing machine screen, okay? But this is from two, char two five inch squares of fabric cut apart into two and a half inch squares and sewn together. This is a modified nine patch, which is what I'm gonna cut right now but this started out at six and a half inches. So it's, you can see it was much, much larger. So we are going to get started here and get my pins put back up here. And now we're just going to piece our nine patch together. Oops, that's not right. There we go. Chicken Little had moved, changed my stitch selection. And then we'll do this one next. So I'm gonna make three rows of three squares is what I'm gonna do everybody. There we go. 
but we are going to use some pretty, um, some really cool eyelash yarn for the chicken combs on these two. Okay, so there are those. back out over here on my little work table so I make sure I sew them together in the correct order. There we go. And we're just going to add each one of these. So much fun. And just think everybody, what I'm doing right now, this one nine patch I'm creating will make enough make enough little blocks to make two chickens. That easy. I cut these squares I'm sewing together. I cut them at four inches. Perfect squares at four inches. Okay. One more. And then we'll go back to the other camera and we'll get these laid out so I sew them together in the proper order. Here we go. There. There. And there. Okay. So, I'm going to check my chat window here real quick. Hello, Mickey. Hi, Terry. Welcome. Okay, so now I'm just going to sew these three strips together and I will nest the seams just like by nesting you match up the seam then you'll flip those two in opposite directions so that they nest and then we're just going to pin it together. We'll put a pin in each one right there. And then do another one. I tell you everybody, they, these are like wonderful little holiday gifts and they're really actually super fast and easy to make. Let's swap back over here. We'll sew those first two together. And yes, I'm using a quarter inch seam throughout. Mary, good evening. Okay, let's open this up and have a look at it. Ooh, that matched really well. Those corners did. As did those. Woohoo. Now we're going to add, I'm going to grab the other piece and we're going to lay it right here next to this. Oops. This will go, the next one will go on right here, like so. And we're just going to pin those two seams. I'm just going to pin it at the seams. It's all I, I really need to do just to make sure that lines up nice and neat. Okay. 
If any of you out there like to do craft and art shows, oh my goodness, you can get really creative with these and make them to set up for those as well. And one more scene. Lining it up. Okay. And one more time right here. I hit the wrong button, it didn't backstitch. <clears throat> okay. So there we go. Here's our nine patch. Yes, Lisa, wonderful Christmas gifts. So now I'm going to swap to the other camera and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this nine patch down the center, both horizontally and vertically, and that will give me four quilt blocks. Let's swap that camera over. Okay. <clears throat> so, I mean, here's the, the hardest part of this, this is actually getting it right in the center. So I could cut this way and this way. So, let's get a measurement of where we're at here. Three and a half inches. So that would be one and three quarter inches from each seam line would be halfway, one and three quarter inches. That just lined up that mark right on top of this seam line right here. And then I'm gonna cut. Okay. Now I'm not gonna move it. And I'm going to do the same thing this in this direction. Let's see here. There we go. One and a quarter. It's all lined up right where it should be. And we'll cut it this way. And this is what's called a modified nine patch, everybody. Now, if I was going to make a big quilt out of this, and I love making using this pattern to make larger quilts, all I would do is flip it that way and this way and sew it back together, and I get a really cool block. Okay? But we're just going to use two of these. That's one chicken. This is another chicken. We're going to have twins tonight, except for their hair. Okay. So... Next, we're going to go back over here to our sewing machine. Hi, Mia. And we are actually going to go back to the machine and we're going to get started. I've already got the chicken beaks done. Okay, it takes four of these. This was a two inch square. I'm going to talk about this before I swap my camera. So. <coughs> This started out as a two inch square of fabric and I've, I've steam pressed it so it's nice and crisp. Okay, so that was a two inch square of fabric. And then I folded it in half like so. Then I pressed it. Then I folded it this way and this way so it makes a triangle and pressed it again. That's a prairie point. I made two of these for each chicken, but then I folded it in half one more time into a smaller triangle, pressed it, and there's one of the, there's an upper beak, and then there's a lower beak. Okay, that's how I'll make my, ch my chicken beats. Then, 
This is a four inch square of fabric, same size as what I used here. Okay, same thing, folded in half, pressed it, folded over, folded over, pressed, and then stop. That is your, your tail feather, your chicken feather is for its tail. You don't have to put tail feathers on, but here's the difference. There's one with the tail feather right here. Here's one without. So it's just a matter of personal choice. I kind of like them on there myself. But you know what? This one I didn't this one doesn't have any in it. It's still just as cute as it can be. So I'm gonna put tail feather on one and not on the other, then we'll compare the two to see which one you like the best. And they'll give you an idea whether you want to put tail feathers on or not, if you make any of these. And I'm sure you will, because this is so much fun to do. So I'm gonna get all this back over here to the machine. Swap the camera. There we go. I'm gonna get a sip of my coffee. Okay, yeah, it's not a good idea. <laughs> okay, so next. <clears throat> when I sew these blocks together, okay, I will do it like this. See that small square there? Well, I will make sure when I sew these two pieces together, they're layered like this. That way, no seam lines match up. All you have to match up are the corners of the little blocks. These blocks came out to measure five and a half inches. Five and a half inches before they're sewn together, so they'll finish at five inches square. Okay? But, <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one to sew the beaks onto because I know one of this little small squares here, this will be up here where the beak, the beak will go right here. And then the comb, which is going to be yarn, is going to go up here at the top. So first I'm going to sew the beak on. Okay. We're going to get the beak on. It's going to take two of these. I'll shorten the length of that stitch down to two. Okay, so and I'm going to move my machine just a little bit closer to me. There we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, and what I want to do. Once I get this layered on, I'm going to start them about three quarters of an inch, approximately. I'm not going to measure, but a finger's width away from the top because you want there to be just a little bit of a space, like right here, between where your, your comb starts and the beak starts. So the, what we do, we are going to nest. <clears throat> One, the lower beak will nest inside of the upper beak. Okay. So what's, what is going to happen here? It's going to go like this. Right here like so. I'm going to hold this by the camera so you can see it. So there that one, I've opened the one up so it's like a prairie point. I'm just going to lay that right there and then fold this one over and there's my beak. Okay. Then I'm going to lay it right there. Right there like this. Oops. Don't get too close to that camera, Richard. There you go. And now I'm just going to stitch it down to hold it in place. And I'm going to stitch it, oh, about an eighth of an inch 
from the edge. I'm gonna take my time, make sure it doesn't get caught up on my foot. This will hold it in place nice and neatly. And I'm gonna go over these again. So this is just basically a basting stitch, but it holds it all in place. You can see there. It's not going nowhere now. It is sewed on there. Pretty cool. Next, <clears throat> right up here, I'm going to put in a, a comb. But we're going to use yarn for this one. And I went through my weaving supplies and I found this hot pink eyelash yarn. And that's what the, its comb is going to be. <laughs> so... What I want to do, <clears throat> now remember, I'm going to turn this inside out. So anything laying over the edge, the raw edge of the fabric, will go to the inside of the chicken. LC, I'm actually, I'm on my Altair tonight, not the Solaris. And all the features that you're seeing here, any, any machine will do this. I'm just using a basic straight stitch, nothing fancy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay out some loopies here. And this would just be a matter of personal preference and choice, everyone. Let me unwind some of this. I have this this eyelash yarn wound on a weaving bobbin because sometimes I like to weave with this on my weaving loom. But I'm just going to fill this little area up. And then I'm going to baste it all down once I'm happy with it. there okay there we go and now I'm just going to baste it about a quarter inch away from that raw edge and here we go So when that is turned inside out, check it out here, everyone. That is going to be its comb sticking out of its top. Kind of like this one right here. Okay. So there's, there's one that's ready. Now we're going to do the other one. But I'm going to use a different, a different yarn for it. I have this yarn from Japan. <clears throat> it's a heavier yarn. This is Noro. If, if you're into yarn, you probably have heard of Noro. It's a really high-end yarn for commercial yarn. Yes, I do spin my own yarn. And next week I am going to be having some lives where I'm weaving one day and spinning another day. But I'm going to take this piece of yarn right here for its comb, for, the, for number two. But first, just like before, I'm going to attach the beak first. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, you. There you go. Get them in there. You can make these larger or smaller, the beak things, just by adjusting the size of the square that you started with. I started with a two inch square of fabric before I started making my folds. 
we're just going to base so base that down. I use this yarn to make the next rooster chicken comb with. So there we go. And you can see I'm just eyeballing that. This one, let's see. I am going to fold it. How do I want to do this? I'm going to fold it like this. <laughs> right here. Just going to make them loops. Now this this yarn here is is um, a wool and silk blend. It's a really nice yarn. And we're almost there. going to put it all on here. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to stitch this all down. And yes, I still have that quarter inch foot on. The J foot would make it way easier, but you know what? I'm just going to get it done with this. You just take your time. You can get that, that to work just fine. Here we go. Okay. There will be its comb once it's complete. Okay, now I'm not going to trim these. These will just be in there where the stuffing is and all that, that fun stuff. Okay, so, and we'll do the tail later for the one of them. Now, we have our two chickens. We have this part done. Now, <clears throat> we have two of these halves. And we're going to put them like this. Remember, up here where the beak is, is a small square. So we're going to put the large square up to that corner, right there like so. And do that with both of them. So once again, <clears throat> you see there's the small square of that particular block. That'll go right over the top of them. And we will stitch all the way down this side where the combs are. Then all the way down this side where the beak is, that's the beak side right here. And then we'll stitch an inch this way and an inch this way and leave an opening for turning. That's our next step on both of these pieces. one of them. Now let's get the other one done. We'll do the same thing on the other one. There's our part with the comb and the beak. Then we're just going to layer that right up there like so. And all we have to do here is match the corners because no seams line up. 
on this one. This one's much thicker to go over with that big yarn in it. So I'm just going to take my time and compress it down with my fingers right here as I'm feeding it underneath the foot. Okay. So we have both of the sides with the, co the combs with the combs on. Next. Oh, hi, Stephanie. Thank you. This is a fun project. I love making these. They are so awesome and fun to make. So there is the side with the, the chicken comb, okay? There's the chicken comb right there. Now we're going to stitch down the side where the beak's at, all the way from corner to corner. both of those. We have two of those to do. So as you can see, what we just did was the side with the beak, the chicken beak, right there. Okay. So next, <clears throat> we got to sew this chicken beak down the side for this chicken beak down also. done so there is chicken comb chicken beak now we're going to stitch an inch this way and an inch down here or an inch and a half whatever you're comfortable leave at least a two inch opening and that's how we'll turn it once all the other side is done so approximately one inch here stop then an inch down here and stop and we'll do them both that way You know, and I'm not measuring that inch. It's approximately an inch or an inch and a half, whatever. <clears throat> it's all good. And we'll do it here. Okay. Then we'll set this one to the side and repeat that process. But check it out, here I have left an opening to turn. That's also, this opening is also where we'll fill it with our whatever we're gonna use for stuffing. We'll talk about that when the time comes. Everybody says to use ground walnut shells. Yes, you can buy those on Amazon. And it'll help it won't dull your needles if you're actually going to use it as a pin cushion. Mine will finally be delivered on this next Tuesday, supposedly. You know, with the holidays here, Mel is getting slower again. I better make sure I don't talk and sew this all the way down. <laughs> but for tonight, I am using poly pellets. And I'll show, show you what that looks like here in just a moment. Oh, get back there, you. There you go. There 
I went a little further than I intended. I'll still be able to get that, but there's that opening. See there? Now, we have this here. So there's a special way to do these. So, one of them, I'm gonna put this, put a prairie point, prairie point in for a tail. We'll do that one second. But first, It'll fit this, what we're gonna do first, it'll finish off like this. There's its rear end, okay? These also are really great to hold down uh, paper templates on fabric to cut, to cut and mark with, pattern weights. So we're going to line up, there's our square like we just sewed it. We're gonna line up this seam to this seam that'll be in the middle, like so. There we go. Line up those two seams. Then we'll put a pin in each end. Let's see, those two seams are lined up right here where my thumbs are, right in there. Now this is where, on the next one, then I would insert the prairie point into this area and match up the center of the prairie point to these two seams right here. But for this one, I'm just going to do it this way. This one, this chicken will not have tail feathers. So now I'm just going to sew that from one corner to the next. Easy. Hit that reverse button. And that one's all stitched together right there. There's that long seam we just stitched. And we'll I'm going to wait and turn them both at the same time. So now we're going to do the other one. This one has the eyelash yarn for the comb. And this one's going to get the tail feather. One prairie point is the tail feather. You can put more than one on there. I have one that I did where I put a couple. Where is that one at? Let me see here. Nope. 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 Come here, chicken. There it is. <laughs> so see this one here? And that's what it looks like with just fabric. And it looks... I like the look with that, even if there's not a little any piecing in it, too. It makes a cute block. But there I did two different sizes of prairie points to make, so it would have two tail feathers. See there? Okay. So on this one, same process. We're going to match up this. Here's the opening, our last opening that we haven't stitched yet. And we're gonna match this seam to this seam. Right there. I'm gonna put a pin at each end just to hold it in place. Okay, right there. Then we're gonna take our prairie point and I, you can put it in either way. I personally think this cool little fold line looks best if it's sticking up. So you want this to line up with the top of your chicken, for instance, with that there like this. You want that folds to go up towards the comb. See, there's the fold. 
there's the comb part. So you want it to go in like this. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to stick the point in first, right here. Then I'm going to pin it in. I'm going to match the center point to the center seams right here. The center point for the prairie point to the two center seams for the chicken body. And then I'll pin it again. And then I'll even up the, the raw edges up here at the top and do a final pinning for that. Look up on you. Hold on everybody, my hand's wanting to cramp. Just a minute, let me crack my knuckle. There we go. Yeah. There we go. The tail feather was being stubborn. Okay. So I'll start here and then I'm just going to sew it all the way across from corner to corner. Doing my best to keep the raw edges aligned. And there we have assembled two chickens. Oh, Lisa, I love my Noro yarn also. It is awesome. If I'm not spinning my own yarn, I use Noro yarn. Yes, Betty, the chicken with the, with the two tail feathers, I only put an upper beak on that one. So you don't have to put two in if you don't want to. It still looks cool with just one little beak on it with just one little beak there. That's just one prairie point folded in half. Just set that one there. Now we're going to turn them inside out. <clears throat> Save that one for that. We're going to do the one without the tail feather first. I'm just going to turn them inside out. Back that camera out just a hair. There we go. I'm just going to use my finger and gently push out the corners. Here's one. There's one, there's one, and up here at the top where the beak and the combs are, let's get that one out. Come on out. Here we go. There we go. Okay. I'm just taking my finger and running it along that seam line on the inside right there. And it comes out okay. And there we have it. And there's our opening to stuff it with. 
And there's one chicken with a Noro yarn comb. Pretty cool. Okay. Just set that one right there. Then we're going to turn the one with the eyelash yarn and with the tail feather. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, Stephanie, the video is the pattern. There is not a written pattern for this. Okay, there's its tail feather emerging right there. Okay. There, there's its tail feather. There's this little beak, this little eyelash comb. And I'm going to take my finger and push out each corner. It needed more eyelash yarn on top, I think, but it's okay. There we go. And now there's, of course, is its opening. Woohoo! And there's that one there. Pretty cool. So now I have two chickens to put stuffing in. And not the kind you would eat or bake. <laughs> so, I need a sip of my coffee before I start on this one. I'm going to move my machine back a little bit here. Because guess what? There's no more machine stitching. The rest is all done by hand. Now, what I'm stuffing with right now, since my walnut shells have not come in, this is what I'm using. Poly pellets. And what they look like, let me get some in my hand here. They're little plastic pellets, but they're made for people who make dolls and stuff like, like that. These are little plastic pellets. If you can see that. But they're great for making bean bags and seek and find games, dolls and crafts, weighted blankets and lap pads, use alone or with polyfill. Okay? Weighted stuffing beads is what it says, made by Fairfield. This was a six pound bag. And I have stuffed all of my chickens with it, and I still have this bowl of it left right here. So what I did, I put it out into a large bowl. You get some of my hand threads out of that. Here we go. And this is a little fill cup from one of my irons. It just makes a good cup to scoop, scoop the stuff up with to pour it in. This... <laughs> This is a Madeira cone of quilting thread, an empty one, of course, but I'm using it as a funnel to pour in the beads with. You can also use rice or dried rice, dried beans, but the, the standard for making pin cushions is the ground walnut shells. And what that does is it keeps the tips of your pin sharp. Yes, Betty, you can get your nutshells at the pet store. I actually put a link in the video to what I where I got mine. I got mine off of Amazon. They even make lavender scented nutshells if you want your pincushion to have a nice scent to it. And then there's also the unscented variety as well. No, I have at least I have not used the two pack for stuffing. I have tons of these cones. I got, this is what I use in my long arm. I've always got empty cones. I never, so I never throw stuff away, everybody. <laughs> you can always find a use for this stuff sooner or later.
Okay. okay. <clears throat> so next we're going to stuff our chicken. <laughs> yeah, we're going to stuff our chicken next. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn him upside down. I'm going to place it in with the beads. I'm going to get me a scoop. Get me a scoop of beads. I'm going to stick in my cone. I'm going to hold it right there like that. And then I'm going to start pouring my beads in. Let's see here. There we go. And I also use a little bit of fiber fill at the end, and you'll see. Okay, I just have the whole tube here is filled with this, so I'm going to raise it up and angle it around, empty it off in there. And the reason I have it laying inside the bowl of beads when you have overspill, guess what? It goes right back to where it needs to be. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> okay. And there we go. Now I'm going to finish. This will be is the actual bottom of the chicken where the seam is. So now I'm going to get some of my fiber fill. And this is what I've got. Royal Silk Polyfill. This stuff it's a luxury down alternative. There's a lot in this bag. This is the softest stuff ever. It doesn't even feel like polyester. It does feel like silk or cashmere. It is awesome, awesome stuff. And what I'll do, <clears throat> I will start stuffing this inside of here and with my finger pushing it towards the corners. I'll first just start sticking it right in the middle until I get a good start of it. Then I'm going to work it all the way into the corners, and this will finish filling up my chicken. What I've discovered <clears throat> with those beads, and I'm sure the walnut shells are probably the same way, it's difficult to get this completely full to be able to sew it shut with nothing but the beads or the pellets. So this is how this is what I came up with to solve that problem. As you can see, then once I pick it up, I'm almost ready to start closing this little gap. And that's what I'll do next, right here. Okay, so there it is. This is ready to close up. Now, it's great to have this bowl of beads or whatever, because I can just set it right on top of that, and I don't have to hold it in my hand to sew it shut. I'm going to angle it so you can get a look at this. Next, I am going to get my needle. This is a Sashiko needle. It's a big needle with a big eye because I like to use a heavy thread. So for this one, and since I am hand stitching and I rarely hand stitch, I want people to see these stitches. <laughs> so this is some Sue Spargo thread. It is a limited edition color, Sue Spargo. I'm trying to look for the weights. Made by Wonderfill. Eleganza Pearl number five. This is a five weight thread. This is some pretty stuff, everybody. I'm going to cut off just a little bit over a foot of it. Okay. I'm going to 
going to thread it in my needle. I'm going to attempt to thread it in my needle. I'll try not to use my little cheater tool. I'll probably have to get that out. Okay. There we go. Nope, let me get my tool. Yeah, the needles I'm using are these made by Lucien from Japan. These are hand sewing needles, Sashiko needles. It says Sashiko right there with some Japanese writing. But that package of needles come with this little needle threader. This is a super handy thing to have. We've all seen these, I'm sure. <clears throat> so I'm going to stick this through the eye of the needle. There we go. And we'll just hang there. And I'm going to put that through the wire loop. Got to get in a position where I can actually see it. <sighs> Come here, you. Okay. There we go. Then we'll just pull that right through the eye of the needle. Easy peasy. Okay. Then I'm going to put a knot in the end of it. <clears throat> and this is how I like to put a knot in the end. Hold on. So here's the end of my thread right here. Let me move this out of the way so maybe you can see it a little bit better. But there's the end of my thread between my finger and thumb. Then I'm going to lay my point of my needle going that way. And I'm going to go around my needle three times. One, two, three. And I'm going to just pull it through and that will actually put a knot at the end of my thread. There we go. I have a nice little knot there at the end of my thread. And all I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this. Let's see here. I'm going to get a different camera over here so maybe you can get a better look at me doing this. Hold on. Move that. Let's swap that camera. And there we go. Okay, so there's my opening, and I'm just going to put my needle under into the opening and bring it out from the inside out. It's <clears throat> where the knot's at. The knot will catch it. Okay. And with it laid down like this, I just stick my finger right here to push the stuffing down. And I'm just going to like use a blind stitch and close it. Easy peasy. I know on the camera this looks more salmony colored, but it's very much pink in real life. I'm just going to go all the way down this seam and lace it shut. I'm turning under approximately a quarter inch of the fabric on each side of the open each side of the fabric on this opening.
Now next weekend I'm going to be showing our project will be my bowl cozies which is something I'd like to make during the holiday season. They make wonderful gifts as well. And that's what I'll be showing my technique for for that. Tomorrow is will be our first episode for my Losing My Marbles quilt from my Quilts in Italy series. We'll be talking about fabric selections and all that fun stuff tomorrow. Here we go. sitting here trying to decide what color of this heavy thread I'm going to use for the eyes. You could also use buttons for the eyes if you want to put eyes on your chicken. You could also use, <clears throat> excuse me, you could hot glue eyes onto it if you wanted to. But I'm just going to go all, all hands on and do some embroidery knots for the eyes. I just think it would be kind of cute. I'm almost done there. Getting that last little bit of that seam closed up. But see how handy the bowl is to have your project sitting on? It just keeps it at the right height. A little bit, another two more stitches and I can tie it off. just keeps it right at the right height with that that fill on the in the bowl there there we go now then to finish <clears throat> I'm gonna stick my needle through like I'm gonna make another stitch like I just did and then I'm gonna wrap my thread around it three times I'm gonna pull it out <clears throat> I'm going to hold my finger there and get that knot right close to the surface. There we go. And then I'm going to stick my needle right up underneath and run it up back under that seam line that I just sewed closed and pull that needle out right here. And then I'm just going to back stitch back to where the knot is. So check it out, everybody. Do some quick back stitches, about four. And one more. If you don't have a good sharp needle, you may need to use a thimble to push that needle through. I'm just going to run it back up under the seam twice, away from where the knot is. Oops, there's one. And two. I'm getting that needle down into that poly, that uh, polyfill. Here we go. That's not going to go anywhere. Then I'll just snip it even with the surface and it's done. Okay. <clears throat> now we'll just hold it over the bowl and shake off any beads that came, came up with it. Make sure there's none in its mouth. Open up. Chicken little. There we go. And there we go. All we have left to do now, if you want to, you don't have to put eyes on it, but some people do, they will take a straight pin with a nice head on it. These are corsage pins that you use in a log arm. And you can stick that in right up there like that for an eye as well. But we're going to do an embroidered one. And I'd follow the same process for this one. Same way, just what I just did, close it up, all that fun stuff. 
<clears throat> but now we're going to take this one. I'm going to move my bowl away, I think. No, I'm going to leave it here. Set you right up there. Because now we're going to get out our Sue Spargo book. And we are going to attempt to do... I shouldn't say it like that, I don't guess. But we're going to attempt to do on camera a colonial knot. Okay. Take that back out. <clears throat> okay. And let's see. I would want a thread that will contrast with this fabric. So I'm going to put in a, an embro a embroidery, hand embroidery knot. I want people to be able to see it, that's for sure. Let's see here. Not this. Maybe this lavender blend. Nope, that would blend into. Oh, I see the one I'm going to use. This neon orangey pink would look make a nice eye, I think. Would that look nice on there? Okay. So. I'm going to measure me off about, oh, 18 inches of this thread and cut it. Then I'm going to thread it in that needle that I was just using. Right here. Back it up just a bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm sure I will have to use my little threader tool. Where did I put that at? There it is. <laughs> we'll just start with that and save some time. <laughs> okay. We'll put that through the wire loop. And pull it through. Pull it through. Okay. Now then, we're going to let it rest right there for a minute. And we're going to go to our book. <laughs> <laughs> right here colonial knot what I love about this Sue Spargo book <clears throat> that, that is step by step instructions <clears throat> excuse me on how to do these different these different hand stitches larger and higher than the French knot the colonial knot creates a satisfying filler stitch when multiple knots are worked closely together so here's our first step this little picture right here so let's see here I'm going to put a small knot because I'm going to try to bury this I'm only going to go around one time this time. Okay. I just put a, a very small knot right there on the end. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in at a, on the seam line and come out about where I want that eye to be, or where I think I want it to be, about right there. We'll gently pull it through, and I did. Okay, now we're gonna do this. I'm gonna raise this up a little bit, and it's gonna go over and under like so. Turn your needle counterclockwise so it's horizontal with your work using your left hand. Take the thread over the needle in a counterclockwise position. So it's like that. I'm just going to go, okay, I get it over and under like that. 
insert the beetle next to the emerging fabric. Okay. Right there. Turn the page. Gently pull the thread to tighten the knot at the base of the needle. Okay, right there like that. Oh, then take the needle to the back of your work. Well, that doesn't make as big of an eye as I thought it would. I'm just going to go over to the other side where the other eye would go. Just see what happens here. So there is its eye right there. That is a cute little knot. <clears throat> I think it would look better if that had a double thickness of yarn doing it, of thread. But we're going to make another one right here now. Let's see. Over. Uh, -bum. It's going to go like this. Right? Nope. Hold on. Like this. To the back. Then, oops, then, like that. Then, I'm going to stick the needle in close to where it the thread comes out and tighten the knot to the fabric. Then I'm going to bring it up at the seam. Oops, lost it. Let's get it back uh, like this. And up and under. And right there like so. Well, those are cute little knots, if you can see that or not. But yeah, those make good little little eyes. I'd rather they be larger. Let's see. But that'll just have to do for this one. I'll practice a different one on some other ones. But there's my eyes. Now I'm just going to take a couple of back stitches up here in this seam. Right in that seam to secure both of those knots. <clears throat> and then I'll just snip it even with the fabric and it will be done. Just snip it. And there's that little chicken, chicken pin cushion, all done. There's the bottom of it where I sewed it shut. There's one little knot eye. Here's another one. So Terry, my book, is it a first or second edition? That's a good question. I've had it for quite some time. Let's see here. Second edition. This is a second edition book. I think I bought this at a, at a, when I was traveling for AccuQuilt at a store in Ann Arbor, Michigan. A wonderful Bernina shop right there. They had tons of fabric, and I did a couple of events for them back then. But it's a great little book. Another thing I picked up there was this pocket guide to embroidery. This is all about hand stuff, everybody. This is not machine embroidery. But check it out. <clears throat> when you open this up, there's a whole chart here, step-by-step -step instructions, back stitches, 
blanket stitch, chain stitch, couching. There's a ruler on one end. And when you flip it over, there's more. Oh my goodness, is there ever. Cross stitches, feather stitches, filling stitches, running stitches, satin stitches, and weaving stitches. Lots of fun stuff. <clears throat> and I never really did any hand embroidery. I'd always done hand quilting, but this just kind of, I find this interesting, especially when you're going to use some of these beautiful heavier threads that are available today. But that's another handy little, if you're interested in this, this is another good little item to get. And I'll try to source these to, and offer them on my website <clears throat> to see if I can find those because those are really good. And I think I'll, I didn't pay much for this. I think I paid like five bucks for it, but it has been several years ago. Different types of running stitches and ways to embellish them. Lots of fun. There's our chicken du jour. There's her sister. So much fun, oh my goodness. Oh, wonderful, Terry. Did I meet you at, at, the, at the Ann Arbor Sewing Center or have I met you up at Decorative Stitches in um, Shelby Township? Terry, I'll be up in Ann, uh, at Decorative Stitches in Shelby Township in March. Doing a Sashiko workshop up there. That's what I'll have to do, Lisa. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to make everybody, and I can tell you when you make one, that the kind of becomes addictive. It, well, no, not kind of. It does become addictive, and you just want to do. I really like this one. I think I like this better than this eyelash yarn although I think if the eyelash yarn was more it means more than just what this one here is but it's still cute yeah but I really like how this looks yeah pretty cool so much fun everybody alrighty tomorrow I will be on here at noon tomorrow 12 noon central standard time nope gonna make that 1 p.m. central standard time and that way everybody can have lunch and all that fun stuff. But we're going to do our first episode, episode one of the Losing My Marbles quilt out of the K Facet book, Quilts in Italy. That begins tomorrow, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Oh, my goodness. Let me swap my camera back over. Hold on. There we go. So, let's put our newest chicken to our collection right up here. And let's go ahead and put in the first pin. Here we go, come here you. Just put in our very first pin on camera for that, that pin cushion, right there it is. Right there. Here we go. And have a wonderful evening everybody and I'll see you all tomorrow, one o'clock Central Standard Time, Quilts in Italy, The Losing My Marbles Quilt. We'll be talking about fabric selection and cutting techniques. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye now.